Okay, so what I'm going to do today is maintenance on my sailboat, the motor that is. Um, I've had this boat for about two years and I've never changed the coolant. Um, and I looked at the coolant, or actually looked at the reservoir of the coolant. It's actually kind of um, brown and actually on the side of the reservoir um, or the um, overfill reservoir is actually on the side is actually all this brown stuff and I touched it's like mushy kind of like um mm, jello-y consistency uh, but it's brown and it, I'm pretty sure it's rust and I don't know if the owners has ever changed the coolant um that it had before me I know within the two years I've never changed it um so the coolant on the motor I have uh the motor on my sailboat is actually um it's a Volvo Penta D 2000 diesel series. Um, so I'll show you how to change the coolant on it um, and show you all the different steps. Um, but I'm not. But I'll make the the video quick because I'm not going to show you how to like unscrew uh, um, a screw on you know things like that. You don't really need to see, right? I mean, you see all these videos on YouTube that shows every little thing that needs to be done I'm just to tell you how the steps to do it um, all right let, let me start okay so this is my Volvo Penta motors right there um, it's actually under the stairs so I um, pulled back the stairs there um, so let's see um, <clears throat> what you'll need to do is a couple of things um, since you're re uh, um, removing the coolant I would recommend examining the thermostat, which is going to be this right here. It's right there. It's going to be under this cap right there. A um, couple things we're going to do is we want to examine the thermostat, make sure it's working. And also, it's kind of actually easier to fill the coolant, one, coolant once the thermostat is out. Um, and then we can actually see the, the, how bad it is inside the, the, the housing of the coolant. Um, what we need to do is actually remove here. We're going to have to remove the alternator, which is right there. That's right there. That's the alternator. Um, because the where we remove the or release the coolant is going to be back there. There's a nut back there that removes the coolant. Um, so, be, so how we remove that alternator, and also if you ever need to do um, replace a belt. Um, same process, you're going to have to remove a couple of nuts or we're going to have to remove that one, um, loosen this one, and loose and remove this, this bolt right there where my light is, right there, that one. We'll remove that and that will loosen the tension on the belt and then we can remove the alternator also. And also on the back of the the motor, which I'll show you, has also um, another screw that you can. That's right under the um, um, heat exchanger. Um, once we remove that screw, um, some of the coolant will come out also. Okay. You also want to um, unscrew the coolant under here. We can see right there. Right there, this it's right under the heat exchanger. This is where um, water comes in from the seacock motor and so forth, and cools it down. And that coolant plug also. So unscrew that one too. So in the next clip, I removed the um, starter. Uh, I already removed it already, and it wasn't anything difficult. It's just like I said, remove three bolts and remove the belt. Um, and then there's a couple of cables in the back that you'll just need to disconnect. Um, but one thing is, um, make sure that you know, remember or take a picture or note what cables go to what just in case, um, so you don't put in the wrong one. Um, so next clip, like I said, um, I'll show you where the drain plug is for the, um, to release all the coolant. So the coolant drain plug is behind the, um oil filter which is right there.
coolant drain. Unscrew that and all the coolant's gonna come out. I um, unplugged the drain plug for the um, coolant and as you'll see a lot of it came out to the bilge pump below which is expected. Um, so what I did also was to prevent, so this is some of it but a lot of it I actually captured. So what I did was I took a tube like this here and I stuck it into where the, the drain comes out. Where the drain comes out right there, right there, where it comes out right there. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong spot. Where it comes out right there. Um, so I put the tube, I put the tube in, um, over it. And then I put the, the other end into a bucket. So actually a, a lot more fluid went into the bucket versus here. This was just the... Um, the residual that leaked out of the hose. If you don't have the hose, all of it will drain out here. I mean, it's not a big deal because all this is contained. Um, you can't go anywhere, but it's just easier to clean up when I don't have to clean up as much. Now, I um, just have to do reverse, put put the fluid in, and... Um, so, in the next clip, I actually forgot to film. I took off the um, thermostat. Um, it was... It, the thermostat housing was that round um, housing where I showed you early on top of the motor. You can't miss it. So, um, so I took it out, and now I'm in the process of um, filling the coolant into there. Um, but like I said earlier, is you want to examine the thermostat, and how you want to do that is take it out, um, clean it. And, and actually mine was pretty bad. There was actually rust build up on the sides and so forth. I tested it out. It actually worked really, it worked fine. But you know what? I had one on order anyways. So I put the new one in. Um, actually, before you put the new thermostat in, you actually should test that also. Um, to test out a thermostat, it's really simple. Um, I'm not going to make a video of it. Um, but all you have to do is boil water, put the thermostat in, and take it out and see if it opened or not. So if it opened, then it worked, and then let it cool for a little bit, or put cold water and see if it closes. Um, and if it doesn't either, it doesn't do either one. It doesn't open when it's hot, and it doesn't close when it's cold. Then you have an issue with the thermostat. Um, so like I said, um, okay, let's move on to the next clip. So took off the thermostat housing, which looks like this, and there's the thermostat. Um, actually removed it earlier it was actually kind of tight and i should show you it was all a bunch of crud on here um remove that i actually test it also i put in hot water and it did open up and close when it got cooled but it doesn't matter i actually bought a new one anyways so and this is the new one um so I might as well put the new one in, but before I put the new one in, I'll actually test the new one also. Put it in hot water and see if it opens up and then closes when it cools down. Um, I did some cleaning, cleaned inside the housing of the thermostat and found that this was, this was all plugged up. So I actually couldn't even um, remove it. I stuck a really thick wire in there and it would not come out. I took a coat hanger wire, couldn't come out. So what I did is actually I drill, put a small drill bit in there that fit in there. Um, whatever was in there was all, I don't know, I think it was been rusted, rusted in there. It was actually really hard to actually even drill that out. Basically this is the um, over, overfill, it goes to the overfill tank um, or the reservoir. Okay, so I emptied the coolant, took out the thermostat, and it looks like that. And then I cleaned the, um, all that so smooth. Now I'm just going to reverse and put the thermostat housing back on. Actually, I'm going to put the coolant in first. So I'm going to fill the coolant in here as much as I can. And then once the... Um, what's left I can't fill I will put it in the the, reser the reservoir up there So you can see I filled the coolant as much as you can you can see the um, 
liquid in there. So now I'm going to put the housing thermostat back on and hook up the um, um, hook up the hose to this. And then once I'm done with that, I will fill that up with um, the rest of the coolant, or not fill it up, but to the recommended um, area. The coolant I'm going to use for my Volvo Penta 2000 diesel series. Um, it's green and it's recommended for the older um, Volvo motors like mine. So if you have a newer Volvo uh, motor, you don't want to use this stuff. You want to use the VCS, which is yellow. So again, all the older Volvo use this this one here. It's um, It's green versus yellow. So I did not film myself putting everything back together, you know, like filming coolant, putting the alternate back in, putting all the wires back on. Um, if you're watching a repair video, you guys are pretty smart that you shouldn't need to someone show you how to do reverse what you just did. Um, so I'll probably film more videos because I have some other repairs I need to work on my boat here. And because everyone knows if you own any type of a boat, there's always some type of work that needs to be done. Um, so thank you for watching my video. Thanks.